So you are itchy. Everyone is itchy right now. Everyone is itching. But what tool do you choose to help your itch? What's your anti-itch tool? Let's see what everyone is choosing. Are you really using an anti-itch cream? Or are you using your phone to soothe your itch? Or you're using food to soothe your itch? You find that itch. You, everyone around you is itchy right now in this today's society. Everyone feels discomfort, so they just find a quick fix. The phone, the food that they eat, they keep on snacking all day long. When they feel that itch, they feel something discomfort, they just put out their phone and look at it and their sadness, they're concerned, their their stress just melt away. When you have stress, you know where that stress coming from. You know you are having stressful work day, so your work is your stress reason. But that itch, that discomfort comes from nowhere. You just feel like, Ugh, I'm so bored and I need something to do. You cannot sit with that discomfort, that itch. It's not just boredom, but that kind of itch. Itching your mind, your body. You just feel like there's something that's discomforting and you need something to fix it you need something to fix that discomfort so consider how many times you pick up your phone you pick up your phone not because you know there's notification but it's because you feel something and then you need to check even if you know there's nothing there you feel like you are bored, there's nothing to do. You are, your mouth wants something. But it's not craving, it's just your mouth wants to choose something. So you find some popcorn, find some snack, so that your mouth can be busy and not feeling that awkwardness. But all these things is like it brings bad results, bring negative result to you because after you do this, you don't feel fulfilled or you don't feel happy. It's just you feel your discomfort gone. But the issue is still there that discomfort will still be there it just grew bigger and bigger every time so now instead of picking up your phone 10 times a day you be pick up your phone 60 times a day instead of just having some snack in the middle of day now you want snack all the time it grows into a habit and that habit is not a good habit because it doesn't make you feel happy, it doesn't fulfill you. All this bad habit is just covering up your discomfort. The temporary fix. Imagine your body, your mind is a garbage can. Every time you dump some trash and garbage into the garbage can, days go by and you will spray some perfume around it because it starts smelling. But instead of cleaning up the garbage can, bring the trash out for garbage disposal day, 
you just let it sit there. But you do the temporary fix. You spray the perfume. When there's something rotten in it, you just pile some paper on it so the paper can absorb that moisture and then temporarily fix the issue. But days goes by, day goes by, you didn't want to dig the trash can thing, you didn't want to bring out the trash, you just spray perfume, continue to dump paper on it. Now, the trash can is so heavy. Now, you don't even want to touch it. You don't want to dump anything on it anymore. You are not fixing that garbage can anymore. It's too messy now. But the smell is continue to come out. So now, you just continue to spray perfume, hoping the garbage will just go away itself. But the garbage is still there even if you continue to spray perfume you're just covering up that smell and eventually the smell mix up with the perfume that you spray the smell is even more intolerable now you have to buy another perfume so that it's stronger than the previous one and you continue to spray spray it's just so messed up. The mice are coming, the insects are coming. You don't want to deal with that. That makes you feel uneasy. So now you work on the other garbage can. But if you don't fix it, if you don't clean it, if you don't start by removing a little bit up by a little bit, the other garbage can will eventually pile up again and you will have two heavy garbage cans to work on if you decided to work on it later. How do you fix that? How to deal with that? That becomes a habit. That's a habit already. It's become automatic. In your system, in your mind, everything becomes automatic. Your mind, your brain, your instinct feels that is something that's comforting already. Even though you don't want to admit it, that garbage can is your comfort. It's your comfort zone already. That's why you don't want to make the change. Start by changing your behavior because the behavior is something that can change your mind, change your mood, change how you feel. Start by just getting up, put on the gloves. You start by just doing a little bit, a little bit a day. Now you dig down into that garbage can, put a little bit into that little bag, put, 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 and just clean that little bag for a day for today. You don't need to do a big change if you don't have that energy. Start by doing little and little clean up that garbage. Eventually, all the garbage will be cleaned up and then you can scrap your garbage can, clean all the mold that's building there, clean all the scum, clean all the slimy thing. When you have all this garbage, all the scum, slimy stuff, you don't even see them. But because you start cleaning out that garbage, start by cleaning up that trash bit by bit, you see how it makes your garbage can looks like. And you can easily do actions about it. You don't need to use the profane to mask the smell anymore because now you have a clean garbage can and it won't have any smell. It won't smell funny. 
and you don't need that perfect anymore or you don't need that quick fix you don't need that temporary fix because you now have a clean garbage can your mind your body is in a clean slate yes you will still have trash garbage coming in but because you are starting in a fresh clean slate now everything is so easy just take it out dump it outside you don't need to leave it pile up already you are starting from scratch you are building that good habit whenever there's trash there's new trash coming in you will clean up and your garbage can is always clean your garbage can is always clear easy to work with all our quick fixes the phone the overeating is just to bury down our emotion and our emotion just like the trash if we let them continue to pile up we let the issue stay there and we just use temporary fix to mask the smell to mask our emotion the issue is still there and it will only grow bigger only grow bigger and grow more and then because you let them grow bigger grow mold you have to do extra work to clean the mold to clean the slimy stuff to clean all the scum that builds up okay come. so you see the emotions the discomfort is something that the discomfort is because something feels wrong something's not right but we don't know what it is it's not stress because stress you will know it comes from where where did it come from if you have stress from work you know you know it's from work if you feel like you are stressful around your partner is because oh it's because your partner is doing something but the discomfort, that itch, that itchiness you have to really dig deep down dig, dig, dig and you will find a reason but if you let that discomfort pile up it will become a bigger issue according to the book your survival instinct is killing you if we continue to let the discomfort level pile up and not solving it we continue to do something to distract us every time we have that discomfort feeling eventually it will trigger our stress response our flight or fight response our limbic brain our prefrontal cortex that directly can bypass our logical brain and activate our survival mode our flight or fight response we reach out for the quick relief we are not dealing with our problem anymore we just need the relief and every time we we reach out to that quick relief we are conditioning ourselves to build that habit we are linking the emotion the things that are happening we are linking the trigger and the relief together we are pairing them together every time i feel discomfort i will reach out to my phone every time i feel discomfort i will eat the snack and that is relieving we are conditioning them together we are pairing them up if we don't fix our discomfort eventually it becomes the stress we continue to push through and the stress level the stress the discomfort is still there but eventually the discomfort becomes stress because they are basically the same 
feeling. You feel like uneasy, edgy, and stress is basically the same. But because you're building up that discomfort level, our brain doesn't know how to distinguish them anymore. And now every time that discomfort comes, it becomes stress and it triggers our survival mode. So now we are either we have no no more logic, we can we cannot think clearly anymore. An example every time because you feel so discomfort, you feel some uneasy feeling when you uh, at a public speaking event yeah you feel like you almost think out and first time you make it but now you link that event to being stressful because of those uneasy feelings the second time you do it now you feel even more triggering your system. And the third time, now because of all the unsolved discomfort in the past, you now suddenly find yourself having panic attack. You feel like the wrong is because public speaking makes you feel like uneasy. And now you link it, link it to the events space as well. At that time, you smell some orangey perfume. The room is stuck full of people. So now every time, because you have that panic attack, every time you smell some someone wear the orangey perfume or you go to a dark room, you go to a room that's full of people that's similar to the event that you had your panic attack now you feel like that's triggering that is linked to your panic attack and your panic attack will likely happen again because those are your triggers you link them you pair them in your mind that those are your trigger so now you become less and less more able to do new things to try new things because all these are your trigger and the trigger will only grow more and more because it's like a butterfly effect when you go to when you saw that orange perfume person she's or she's wearing a scarf that's similar to the public event that you had the the woman that wear the orange perfume is also wearing scarf and now you also link them together whoever wears scarf makes me feel make me feel stressful and my panic attack will will come whenever I saw that person just more and more your your because your survival mode is 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 activated so now everything you see can trigger you is danger your mind keeps looking for danger more and more people will only be more feel more discomfort nowadays because of order stimulant of all the quick fixes we have how convenient our society is when you go to your friend's home for dinner when they invite you to dinner they mention oh come at 12 p.m we are having lunch but when you arrive they are still making that making that lunch now you feel discomfort you feel a bit edgy because you your mind already think about 12 p.m i will have lunch so that uncertainty makes you feel uneasy think about food 
we used to cook our food in a stove but no now i want frozen meal i can just pop it in the microwave and boom three minutes i can have my dinner when i rely on dine out when i rely on food delivery service i feel so uneasy to open my fridge look at what ingredients i have i have to wash them prepare them cut them and put them on the stove and it's not ready yet i still have to wait i still have to wait for the stool to in a in an hour so i can eat that stuff rather compared to food delivery i want that mcdonald i want that chicken rice i don't need to prepare rice and chicken separately i don't need to marinate the chicken i can just click and then boom 10 minutes later my chicken rice is in my front door i don't need to wait all these quick fixes just make our life easier and easier and then don't and we don't want to go back to that difficult lifestyle anymore The society nowadays, the culture that we are in now, think about swiping for your date. You can just swipe your date, come out, talk a bit, next, you wake up in bed with the person already. But compared to before, you have to go through all the steps, you have to start getting knowing a person, you don't see her profile all night, you don't know what she like, how she is, you have to take time to get to know a person. No, we don't do this anymore. Two ways of time. Our time is so valuable. Let's make everything quick. Quick, quick, quick. But because of the quickness, we cannot tolerate the slower, the slow motion anymore. That one hour movie, slow, so slow pace, I would rather watch a YouTube video that break down that slow movie in 30 minutes. I don't need to go watch that movie, I can just learn how that movie is by watching another youtube video that's quick easy we continue to lower our tolerance level and that's why our discomfort level is piling up is rising because there's so much we cannot tolerate now because of that te technology all the things that we see online we forgot how real life should be everything takes time the plant needs to take three years to grow to this tall in video we see that oh the plant the time lapse it just took one minute and i can see it grow this big already our our perception our expectation is defined by this imaginary world instead of the real world we forgot how the real world works our expectation our perception already changed changed by all the things that we see we heard we listen now that the real world is so slow we can't tolerate it anymore and that makes us feel uneasy and that because of that uneasiness that discomfort that itchness our stress level is getting higher and higher and it's funny because now our world is progressing we are progressing but we are going back our survival mode is just like thousands of years ago we are just like our ancestor now feels like everything is danger 
Although we don't feel like it, but our brain, our instinct, our instinct feels like it. How can we remove this discomfort? How can we lower our discomfort level so that we don't feel uneasy and at ease so easily? We all have our happiness set point, which means when we get there, when we get something, it triggers our happiness. We also have the discomfort set point that we have a level of tolerance of how discomfort we can be, how much discomfort we can tolerate. There's a set point. We have to help our set point from here, go from here back to the normal set point, the normal level. So here the step. Begin by limiting your phone use. Our phone triggered our discomfort level. It's a stress because of the high that we see in our phone, the social media, the videos, or the high that we get. Every time when we get the reward, like the food you eat, when you crave that food, and when you pick up your phone and you finally saw something you like, your dopamine level search. Your leveling, your dopamine level is at all time high because that means pressure. You get the reward, the pleasure. And then our brain will do the pairing. It pairs the pleasure as your phone. Every time your phone is in your sight, when you think about it, or is when you see it, the dopamine start coming up. It's not the reward that that rise up your dopamine level, but rather the process, the process of getting a pleasure. So when you see it, your dopamine level is high. When you think about food, when you think about the sushi that you are getting, that you might get, your dopamine level up. When you are doing shopping, when you are because it pairs with the reward. So now every time you do shopping, you last time the bag you buy brings you pleasure. Every time you do the shopping process, the dopamine level is rising because the process, the process of getting that reward, the uncertain reward, so the dopamine level is high, but when dopamine level is high, do you know what happened? Because you have that high, your dopamine level will need to drop a bit to back to its normal level, which the stack is higher now because the torrent level will build up, but after a search, you will always come down. And because that calm down, that the process of coming down, your body will feel discomfort because there's a difference during the high and the low. Your body always wants to chase the high. So now if you let your body, your mind to chase that high, you are doing that action again. When you see your phone, you want to get that high again. During that time, you're thinking about doing that phone grabbing. Your dopamine is not at the search level yet. It's not searching yet. That discomfort is triggered by your limbic brain. And your limbic brain will think that you are in danger because of that and easiness, that itch, that uncomfortableness that you are feeling uncomfortable. They think that you are 
you are not safe and that becomes a cycle because every time your discomfort level is up your dopamine level drops and if you don't manage that discomfort you will chase that all time high again so that you feel comfortable and when your discomfort is up your dopamine is lower every time it continues to build up you have to do more and more to chase that dopamine level to match up with your discomfort level it's a vicious cycle so how do we deal with that we have to lower our discomfort level so that our dopamine level don't need to go up so much to ease our discomfort and we have to lower our dopamine tolerance level so that it can go lower instead of sucking there here how do you build your discomfort tolerance level so that you can whenever there's discomfort you know how to help ease the discomfort instead of relying on external things to help ease your discomfort instead of relying on bad habit we can start by using good habit to help with our discomfort so remember about the phone addiction if you see your phone there even you think about it or you see it your dopamine level search so instead try putting your phone in a different room when you don't see it it's so much easier even if you crave it you can buy those lockbox that manage your phone time so when you put in the lockbox it has time limit once the time one hour for example you set an hour focus on doing your things after an hour the lockbox will open so that you can grab your phone again but by doing that putting away your phone not inside not in mind that really helps you instead of bringing your phone around and using your willpower to control your phone grabbing habit same as your overeating habit when you have the available item in your site in your environment no, no matter how great your willpower is there's a chance that you can grab the food you can grab that thing that you crave you can order the thing that you crave to manage it you don't have any snack at your home no not inside not in mind and if you go extreme delete your food delivery account so that you cannot get it so easy your brain is craved for comfortable anything that requires you to do extra steps to to change your pattern your brain will prevent doing that so if you have to go extra steps to go to another room to pick up your phone your brain will, will start to think instead of automatically instead of doing the action automatically so for example phone you put an, in another room close the door you, when you need to grab your phone your brain will 
say, oh, you better stay here instead of going to another room because stay here compared to go extra steps to grab your phone, stay here is more comfortable. Your brain will always find the easiest, comfortable, laziest way to do things. So for overeating, you don't have any snack at home, you don't have food delivery account, that means if you want food, you have to go out to buy the food you need to cook or to make. So your brain will better let you stay inside your home, not going out to not ordering it, not going out to buy the food. Another way I trick my brain to make my phone use not so excited anymore is to put it on grayscale. I use the grayscale filter for my phone. So every time I want to, I grab my phone, I want to look for something because it's black and white, it's so dull in my mind. It's not excited anymore. My dopamine is not searching so much anymore. Root app is really helpful because it starts blocking all the apps that I want to use. Whenever I need to use that app, I need to go to the root app to unblock it. So it's extra step. This extra step trick my brain. Everything is not so easy anymore. So not so easy, not inside, not excited. That help limit my phone use. When I cannot find my phone, before I might go crazy, but now my level, my tolerance level is better. So I just let it be until I really need it. Then I will go find my phone or I just use my computer. So step one is not inside, not in mind. And step two, harder to get, not easy to get. And another tip said from the book, your survival instinct is killing you. There's a really helpful tip set I want to share is to expand your comfort zone. Feel a new habit. Try some new things so that your brain is getting used to getting discomfort and make it and it will link to safety. If you try that discomfort thing, the new thing, and it turns out to be safe to you, not dangerous, not making you feel bad, not making you feel stressed out, then your brain will, will start having more pathways that, oh, new things, discomfort is not equal to danger. Start rewire your brain, reprogram your brain. For example, try to paint a bird if you haven't tried it before. And after that, because painting makes you feel calmer, and you won't have bad reaction from it, like you won't accidentally trip your ankle while painting. Everything turns out to be calm, easy, and happy. Then your brain will start linking new things is not dangerous. Whenever you feel discomfort, find a good hobby instead of bad hobby. Whenever you feel discomfort, instead of lighting up your cigarette, maybe go for a walk. And that links to, that create new pathway, new neural pathway that, okay, instead of doing cigarette, walk is not dangerous. You, you cut off safely. Then your brain will start blinking towards more to the walk. So whenever you feel discomfort, now you go for a walk. And because, because walking is good for you, 
every time you finish walking you feel calmer you feel you don't feel the guilt you don't feel regret and your mind will start picking the walk instead of the cigarette same with meditation we are not getting used to meditate because that's weird that's unnatural to us same as our voice same of our speaking pattern same of same of new language whenever we do new things there's new discomfort there's discomfort because our brain is not getting used to that new habit new things new stuff yet new place new people when we have something new that's always discomfort by practicing by just observe begin to just observe instead of doing some action by embracing that discomfort then you will gain new opportunities new friends new experience instead of activating your survival mode all the time that really not helpful but putting you in a smaller and smaller box I always talk about it everything is muscle even the bad habit the discomfort or the bad habit is muscle by aware what muscle that you are training yourself to what muscle you are strengthening it are you strengthening the muscles that are beneficial to you or are you strengthening the muscles that are hurting you you know that that habit is not good for you but you still continue to do it you are just training that muscle to get bigger and bigger if you notice that a new habit is good for you start by training that muscle by practicing by putting your time awareness effort into that muscle that you want to train that you want to become then you will be happy you will be joyful instead of burying it down burying the emotions that's good for you but let the bad habit bad emotions not bad but negative that are not beneficial to you piling up no emotions is bad for you every emotions is just for you to understand yourself so it's up to you to decide if you want to grow your good muscle or the muscles that is not beneficial to you think about it and i will see you again next time all our feelings and emotions are here for a reason our body and mind are so fascinating they just do all the things they give us all the feelings to help us understand ourselves emotions emotions is our mirror it's reflecting what's happening inside us when we observe this discomfort instead of shoving it under the carpet we begin to understand our value our triggers what makes us happy what makes us feeling at ease what makes us feel uneasy and we begin to build our self-awareness muscle when we feel discomfort that's actually a sign that something is not matching what we want matching our desire matching our mindset and we can use that discomfort to feel our change the discomfort the feeling the emotions that we are feeling inside is actually a bridge that connect us to our outer world and if we use it in a positive way we use it we embrace our emotions it can it can serve us for self-transformation makes us discover ourselves to 
study what we truly are, and if we analyze it, we use that information for our personal growth. That's when changes can happen. That's when we level up. That's when we grow. Embrace our emotions. Embrace our feelings. Start to study it. Study ourselves like, like we study a subject. Ourself is the most important thing in this world. Why you are living your life? Why you are living your life? So that you can understand yourself and make positive change to help others by being your unique self. By being, by simply being. By making positive change to yourself, you are making positive change to people around you. We give off energy. We always have that high vibration. We are actually spreading that vibration, spreading the energy, and influencing people around us, influencing the world. Everything is energy. Everything is muscle. By doing our part. By being our true self, by being the best self, we give off that good energy that fuel the world, that fuel people around us, and we can all grow together.